This episode is brought to you by Green Oak Accounting. If you love dreaming about growing your practice, but you feel a disconnect between where you are now and where you want to be, check out Green Oak Accounting. The team at Green Oak Accounting can translate your action plan into reality. If you're behind on your books, ready to implement profit first, or need someone on your financial team who really understands private practice, schedule a free consultation by going to greenoakaccounting.com. You can also check out their podcast, Therapy for Your Money, on all streaming platforms. Listen at the end of the episode for more information. This episode is also sponsored by CPH and Associates. CPH and Associates is an insurance company that specializes in professional liability insurance for mental health professionals. They currently insure over 100,000 mental health professionals throughout the United States. They can insure you throughout your professional career, starting with your student practicum, through your postmaster's internship, and on to practicing with your professional license. Please stay tuned to find out how you can protect your career with malpractice insurance. You're listening to the Modern Therapist Survival Guide, where therapists live, breathe, and practice as human beings. To support you as a whole person and a therapist, here are your hosts, Kurt Widhelm and Katie Vernoy. Welcome back, Modern Therapists. This is the Modern Therapist Survival Guide. I'm Kurt Widhelm with Katie Vernoy, and this is the episode where we are hearing from somebody who quit their job because of our podcast. And <laughs> this is something that makes makes a lot of what we say a lot more real. Like, man, we're responsible for people's like career choices and stuff. And fortunately, it worked out really well for our modern therapist, survival guide trekker, Marissa Esquibel. And she is here to talk with us today kind of about her process and listening to some of the advice and how it's worked out for her here over the last couple of years. So thank you very much for joining us today, Marissa. Thank you. We are so excited to have you on. Oh, my goodness. You have been a great modern therapist with us. We've had fun over our happy hours and we've had so much fun talking at the conference and all that good stuff. But as you know, we ask everyone that's here, who are you and what are you putting out into the world? Yes, I am Marissa Escobel, and I'm not like a regular therapist. I'm a cool therapist. <laughs> I work in private practice. I'm based in Claremont, and I treat codependency in 20-somethings. And my practice currently, it's 100% virtual. So I have clients in the Bay Area, in the Los Angeles area, Orange County, everywhere in between. And my mission, thanks to you too, I worked on that. And my, my mission in life is to empower young women to stop playing small and to start taking up space. That includes me. And I'm doing that one session, Instagram or TikTok post or podcast slot at a time. Oh, that's amazing. I love that. Oh, I needed you when I was 20. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Help us hear a little bit to understand that. Yeah. How did you find our podcast in the first place and kind of what stuck out to you that made you keep coming back that ended up really setting the foundation for you coming on your journey with us? So back in September of 2018, I was working in community mental health and I spent hours every day in my car driving all over LA County. And for the arguably year, year and a half before that, my routine was wake up, work, listen to Jerry Grossman tapes for the clinical exam and sleep. And I took my licensing test September 1st, 2018 and passed. Thank God. Woohoo. Woohoo. And after that celebration, I was still in community mental health, still driving around Los Angeles for how many ever hours a day. And there was this void, right? And I'm driving like, what am I supposed <laughs> to listen to? <laughs> and I think, I, you know, I'd listened to other podcasts before and something in me decided to look up therapy 
and the Modern Therapist Survival Guide popped up. Who knows? You guys had been already recording for a year and I always go back. So I went back to the very beginning and liked what I heard. And the rest is history. And that was when I remember you were recording two episodes a week. Oh my gosh. That was so hard. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. And it was a lot to catch up, right? Because I went back and I was trying to get current and you guys were just pumping out these podcasts. Yeah. I just, I loved the topics. I loved the insights. I loved the ideas and you would just find me in my car, riveted, working out, washing my car, doing dishes. I just devoured it. I remember too, I was in community mental health, right? And I, I shared certain episodes with my colleagues. I'd say, listen to this toxic work <laughs> environment. <laughs> and, and they didn't, they didn't resonate. I remember How being really, really disappointed that everyone else wasn't falling in love with what I was hearing, but yeah, I, um, I tried to share it. No one else wasn't as enthusiastic and yeah, over time, right. Join the Facebook group conferences, et cetera. But yeah, it just, it really, it really spoke to me. So, you know, we usually ask this, and I'm assuming this is part of what was resonating for you is this idea of what therapists get wrong. Right. And, and we've shifted it to towards the beginning of the episode to try to, to have some learning lessons because it feels like it, it helps to, to uh, frame it better. And we're not shaming anyone, but what are your thoughts on this? What do you think that therapists typically get wrong? Well, I love the question. I will admit that if I were you two and if I were asking it, I would really be asking, what are other therapists getting wrong, guessed, and am I one of them, right? <laughs> like, like that's, that's where that question would be rooted for me. Oh, absolutely. And, <laughs> right. Like, and then it's, it's painful sometimes when guests have described what therapists are getting wrong. I am that therapist. I have been that therapist mm -hmm. overlooking, dismissing, not being vigilant enough about something. So I appreciate it. And going back to what Kurt talks about, right? The deliberate practice. It's a feedback informed question yeah. for us to reflect on what are we getting wrong? And yeah, if you were to ask, and you are asking me that, what do therapists get wrong? I, I'll just speak for myself. It's really hard for me to talk about other therapists without reflecting. And sure. I think at least for me, what I got wrong is especially as an associate, right, getting licensed, I, I got it wrong in thinking that the work environment I was in and what I was being asked to do was appropriate. And not only appropriate, but I think that part of me thought I needed to work this hard to be good. Like, I really, I thought like, oh, look at me sacrificing and, and giving it to these children and foster and probation youth. Now I'm, now I'm, a, I'm good. I'm a good therapist. And that's, that's just wrong. It is so mm -hmm. wrong. And right. Listening to the podcast really started to provide insight to how wrong that belief was for me to have and embody. As you look back at that particular point in your career, we we ask this in that in that framework of, of what's wrong, but what is the right mentality to have in that if that is not the right one to have? It's hard because I feel like in community mental health, at least my experience, it was so normalized to have multiple crises a week 
and show up the next day without asking for an hour or five to stay home. And so I don't, I mean, the right attitude, I think, is what you guys teach a lot is to really think critically about what the hell are we doing? And is it working? Yeah. It was wrong to believe, encourage, and take pride in meeting the expectations that were very unhealthy. So yeah, I think it's right to be critical and <laughs> and question. And we um we had productivity and we used to post it. They 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 changed the policy, they took it down, but they used to post our productivity publicly. Mm -hmm. And right, being this codependent, people pleasing therapist that I was, I was always, you know, 70, 80, 90, 100 percent some weeks. And I had some really unhealthy coping skills. My relationships, my personal relationships were not great because I was so focused on work. And I I didn't, I didn't question it. I wasn't critical. I thought this is what I need to do. And this is who I need to be to please my supervisors and take care of my clients and, and be the good, right. In quotes, therapist. What I'm hearing when you talk about critical thinking on this is that it's not following what kind of the indoctrination is in community mental health. It's, it's actually thinking about how, is what I'm doing impacting me? How is it impacting my relationships? How is it impacting my clients? Right. And I really liked what you were talking about related to the the crisis thing because I don't even know that I had put this to words in my mind because obviously I was in community mental health for a very long time and and managing within it and trying to sort it out and there wasn't really space for you know kind of the processing that would allow and and even just downtime that would allow that avoidance of extreme compassion fatigue or vicarious traumatization or unchecked vicarious traumatization. And I think when we look at this, because at some point, and it sounds like you had this as well, is at some point we wanted to do this work for these communities and actually really give high quality mental health care to people who really need it and be good Mm -hmm. therapists in this situation. And and the environment in many of these agencies does not allow for that. Right. It is therapist zombies walking around <laughs> providing, you know, kind of patch up therapy that doesn't actually move the needle as much, much as it should. I think it right. does. It, it's not negative, but it's not positive. No. It's worth the, the clients. Well, and, you know, I, I kind of put Marissa on the spot here when I asked what's the right thing to do. And even just, you know, in this wonderful world of podcasting, nobody else can see her face, but just kind of seeing the look on her face was kind of this look of like, I'm afraid to even say something like it's a job, like that to go against kind of that, that culture idea of we must do this because it's the greater good. But when right. we don't get kind of that fulfillment, then all of the other stuff that we talk about as far as the passion and everything else that we get shamed on is what puts us into that conflict in the first place. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So how did you go from there to actually implementing some of the stuff that put you back onto the path that you were passionate about stuff? Right. So started listening, started questioning, started resonating, tried to share, did not get a lot of response. (laughs) And at the same time, it was almost like too much light was shed for it to go dark again. So I listened for, gosh, how long did I listen for? Because I stayed, I got licensed and right I heard speakers too. That was interesting. Hearing speaker, uh, guest after guest after guest saying, I started in community mental health and Mm -hmm. then I went to group practice and now I have my own practice and this kick-ass course. So hearing that and 
I think you two are able to bring back some memories, bring back realizations. And so hearing other therapists just like me, right, two, five, ten years from now, the seed, the seed was planted. And right, kept listening. I did start looking for another job. But really, really, I remember my therapist at the time, she said, Marissa, you can, you can start a practice. You can do this. And I remember I looked at her like, like side, you know, like (laughs) side eye, like, no, no, I can't. And how can, how can you believe that about me? Because I don't, I don't believe that about myself. So it took it took a year, right? I did go to a group practice and continuing to be critical. It just, it got to the point where I realized what, right? They take a certain percentage yeah. and they supply an office and they do administration and billing, which is great. But I started to look at the numbers and recognized that my overhead would never be equivalent to the percentage. And right, I'm listening to you. I I went to the camped conference because of the get involved with your camp chapter. So I went there <laughs> in the spring of 2019. I saw you too. I was way too I couldn't, I couldn't say hello. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh my God, there's Curtis Katie. Um <laughs> And I went to Scott Miller's workshop and learned all about the outcome rating scale and session rating scale. And it just, it was listening, going to that conference, being in the group practice, continuing with my own personal therapy and developing my belief in myself. And then the, I think I was too late to the party to go to therapy reimagined 2018. And so for therapy reimagined 2019, signed up, drove to LA. That was really, that sealed the deal because again, I heard the message, Marissa, you got out community mental health. Good job. (laughs) Now you're at a group practice you can do this. You can do this. And I, I remember leaving and I have a work husband to Katie. So I told okay. my work been that conclusion and right. That was last October. So 2020 was my year. And I just, right there, there was the belief, the guidance and the community right? Because of listening to the podcast, I was able to start and create momentum in developing those three things. And I remember afterwards too, how generous some of the speakers were with their time. I reached out to Ernesto, Chrissy Martinez, reached out to you two, took Tiffany's class. And yeah, it, it just, it, the, the, the point tipped. There was a tipping point and private practice was then inevitable. And you mentioned a little bit earlier in the episode about our toxic work environments episode. Uh, what were some of the other things that you were hearing at the time that kind of helped get you to this tipping point of, you know, I'm going to start putting some of these things together that can help maybe some of our other listeners go back and sort through some of our history so they aren't in the same position of needing to drive all over LA and catch up on everything to get to (laughs) where you're at today. Right. I I remember listening to the getting a J-O-B multiple times, interview tips. Mm -hmm. I remember listening to that because I was, I started interviewing at different places, right? When I graduated, I, I thought that the path was community mental health, staying there or going to Kaiser. 
Yeah. That's, that's really, and maybe starting a private practice in my forties or fifties or who knows. Yeah. And yeah, I, so you, new ideas were introduced, new options were introduced and yeah, J-O-B interviews, those were, those were more, I'm trying to think of a metaphor, but those, those were pulling me forward. And then other podcast episodes were pushing me out, (laughs) right? The burnout, the burnout machine, the burnout cycle, bad supervision, therapist safety, right? I was doing community mental health. I was in the homes and I just, I remember you two broke down. I remember that because it was about the tragedy in. In Yountville. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I really, I remember I was like, oh, Kurt and Katie, it is sad. (laughs) And at the same time, I was so naive going to some of these neighborhoods and that wasn't something that we addressed, talked about, prepared for at the agency. And so again, just right. Becoming more critical and, and seeing these see smelling the smoke. Yeah. So, right. Some were pushing me out, some were pulling me forward. And I, I now work for Tiffany McLean. And when I heard her episode, it, I thought good for her, right. She's based (laughs) in San Francisco. Of course, of course she can charge this high fee and, and talk about this. And again, the seed was planted. And so I, I knew of her and then seeing her at the conference. Yeah. That again, it just, it was so evident that I needed to take her course. I needed to invest in myself and, and play big. We're actually going to have Tiffany back on the podcast soon and she's coming to, to therapy reimagine 2021. And I, I remember making the episode with Tiffany and just feeling my mind going (laughs) the whole time because she just has such a great perspective on how we can sustain this career and, and really getting into the money things. And so I think it's, I can see why that would have been one that kind of hit a note that you weren't quite ready to hear, but then the seed was planted. Right. You're talking a lot about kind of these episodes pushing you forward or or different things. And I feel so weird talking about this because it's like, we're just talking and this is actually having an impact on you. So this is, this is like a very strange situation for me to think about it this way. But, but when you're, when you're, listening to something that has an impact on you, whether it's at the conference, the podcast, or anything else. Like there's so many people who can have an impact on modern therapists. And I think that critically thinking, you want to make sure that you're getting lots of information from lots of places. Mm -hmm. But you went from listening to actually implementing things, to creating big changes in your life. Like you started burning yourself out in community mental health, and now you're thriving in private practice. And it's like a hundred percent online private practice, right? So it's, it's something well, where driving you're, is very generous. All right. I'm, I'm emotional. How we'll say emotionally thriving. How's that? I am embracing the agony of building during a pandemic. Okay. There we go. And <laughs> also choosing it, right? Yes. I choose this agony. I choose this, this heartache. I choose this effort as opposed to the heartache agony effort of other options as a therapist. Okay. Fair enough. So thank Mm -hmm. you for correcting that. But, but you, you made those choices and you actually did some implementation here. And so how did you do that? And how would you recommend other people actually take it? Cause, cause a lot of people consume a lot of content and, and it, I kind of think about it as, you know, kind of dust on a, on a, on a, one of those old school, you know, kind of notebooks, but I always think about it as, you know, kind of the virtual dust that ends up in all of these courses and episodes, just information that's stored away on a hard drive somewhere that never gets implemented. So how did you do it and how would you recommend other people doing that? I believe it's a lot like therapy. 
right? I'm more psychodynamic in my approach. So insight is useless unless you act on it. Sure. And at the same time, if, if you're staring in a mirror long enough, you, you, right. There's, there's too much awareness. There's too much insight. Again, just hearing guest after guest and what they've been able to do, developing that, that belief and then connecting with the community. I, I cannot imagine I literally cannot picture being anywhere else than talking to you two right now as a consequence of, of that, of gaining that insight. And you two have been so relatable and the other guests have been so human, right? Talking about bringing the self and using your personality using yourself as your brand. Sure. You've made this so much easier for someone starting at the bottom, figure their way out. It's, it's just, it's too obvious with the markers and the signposts and the detailed inscriptions and the arrows on the ground. And again, like, it, it was listening. It's these, these podcasts pushing me forward and other episodes pulling me and working on myself in therapy, developing that belief in myself, just all of that compounded into, I have to, I have to try. And you're having known Marissa here over the last year or so in a lot closer and closer way and knowing that you had signed your office lease like two weeks before COVID really hit and kind of really, really unfortunate timing. You've managed to you know, kind of keep the the fire going. You've, you've built out your virtual practice a whole bunch. You're, you know, still very much within kind of the first year being out on your own here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, not a lot of people are out there really saying, you know, I've I've got this in the first year. You know, the, the, even some of the more successful, you know, coaches and stuff. You know, they've got five or so years under their belts where they've you know got their systems. Tell us about you know kind of this confidence that you have to be able to be vulnerable about where you're at, successes and mistakes, and all of this kind of stuff right now that can give some of our other listeners who are in those earlier positions, like you were some of that confidence to set forward? Well, it's, it's been really hard. It has right. 2020 was my year and I did visualization and mantras and I put mantras all over my house. (laughs) (laughs) And this was not how I pictured it at all. And at times I get very discouraged and very overwhelmed and very hard on myself. And at the same time, right, some of the presenters at the conferences, some of the guests, I I remember, I think, Kurt, didn't you start your private practice in 2008? Uh, 2010. So this, this was like in the bottom of the original recession. Right. So I remember, I remember hearing these things and, and that stands out to me. That stands out to me when people talk about, yeah, someone presented last year. I can't remember her name, but she talked about starting her practice in 2008 and her workshop was something about continuing on after failure. And so Again, it's, it's hard. And I, I heard someone once they said that starting your own private practice is the the best form of therapy you can ever get, because I've learned so much about myself, this ambitious, confident side, and also this entitled, and I don't want to, <laughs> I don't want to, I don't oh, want to do it. The, I don't want to, right? Yes. Now. <laughs> I just want to collapse. I want to wake up. And I want my site today profile to have generated 
10 contacts. And, you know, for those listeners who are struggling, I would just, if someone had told me two years ago, Marissa, you're going to, you're going to be on this podcast. When I first started listening, I would not have believed you. Mm -hmm. Right. And I told Tiffany, if someone had told me last year at the conference, while I'm sitting in the audience in awe, mind blown, like Katie. Yeah. And if someone had whispered, Marissa, seven, eight months from now, you're going to be working for her. I would not have believed you. It, it, I, of course, I, I have a vision and I am working and I am hustling. And at the same time, it it hasn't turned out how I wanted, but I'm not complaining, right? I I didn't envision being on this podcast two years later, and yet here I am. So for those who are struggling to start, you're, right, I'm psychodynamic ego, your unconscious is going to look for signs that oh, abort, abort mission, right? I could have, I could have worked it. I could have gotten on panels. I could have worked or signed up for better help in March when I was flailing. And at the same time, right, that community, that guidance and that belief, I was able to just keep putting one freaking foot in front of the other because there's right. The signs and guidance and, and I'm enjoying the view at, you know, the, who knows what point, but I'm not at the top yet. Well, and I think the the thing that I really take from your conversation today, and, and I think when you reached out to us to do this, it was, you gave us some feedback that even though we are human and relatable and our guests are human and relatable, they're still much further along in the journey. And I think being able to speak to I think you you described it as kind of the pain and the heartache and and you you said it much better than I'm saying it right now but like of being at this stage and I think building a practice right now is exceptionally challenging. Mm-hmm. It's not just a recession, it's also a pandemic where everyone's having to figure out virtual and and how do we market in this space. So it's 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 very impressive that you're that you're continuing to affirm and choose this path. Mm-hmm. But I think it's and I think maybe we need to to work on this, Kurt, but like we need to be able to talk to people at each stage of the game because I think it's it's something where that's that's sometimes what we need is someone saying, like, yeah, I'm with you. I'm at the same exact spot. You know. It's yeah. it's easy to dismiss people who have gotten to the other side when they say it's doable. Right. It's so far at the top of the mountain. I need yeah. I need someone at the the mile mark. Just like, come on, good job. <laughs> Let's keep going. Yes. Uh, and this is, you know, our call to action of join our, our Facebook group. Marissa mentioned it earlier, the Modern Therapist group. Reach out to us on social media and let us know what you want to hear about in our episodes. Because okay. Katie and I have been doing this for a while. And when we don't get that kind of feedback, we just go with a lot of stuff that we're interested in. And, you know, it, as we find... And maybe no one else is interested and, in And this it. might so be really a, a really important episode to three people if we're Including kind of me. left to our own devices. <laughs> <laughs> but it, as, as Marissa is demonstrating that, you know, as, as you are a part of our community of modern therapists, that we listen to people and we do adjust our our content based on you know needing people in other points of their career to come out and talk and that there are places that we can listen from everybody and learn from everybody and just because some of us have made it through some of these positions have our practices established it doesn't take away from some of the new challenges that get faced by people who haven't had the benefit of years of practice right Thank you so much for joining us today. Where can people find you, Marissa? My website, therapywithmarissa.com. That's one R and two S's. And my Instagram and TikTok handles at therapywithmarissa. So we'll link to Marissa's stuff in our show notes. You can find those at mtsgpodcast.com. 
Follow us on our social media. And until next time, I'm Kurt Woodhelm with Katie Vernoy and Marissa Esquivel. Thanks again to our sponsor, Green Oak Accounting. You went to school to become a therapist, not an accountant. Your time is much better spent doing what you love and not crunching numbers. That's where Green Oak Accounting comes in. They specialize in working with private practices just like yours so you can reclaim precious hours each week. They can help you with all your accounting needs like bookkeeping, budgeting, forecasting, payroll, and even assist with implementing profit first. If you're interested in freeing up your schedule for more clients or just getting back time for yourself, go to greenoakaccounting.com to schedule a free, no obligation consultation today. You can also check out their podcasts, Therapy for Your Money, hosted by Green Oak Accounting owner, Julie Harris. Once again, that's greenoakaccounting.com. Also, thank you to our sponsors, CPH and Associates. With up-to-date legal resources and exceptional customer service, CPH protects your career against a grievance from a regulatory board, claim, or lawsuit. Because their business is specialized, they are able to focus on your liability needs in a way that bigger companies are not. They are able to serve a large client base while maintaining a small office approach. With options to add general liability, cyber liability, and coverage for your LLC or corporation, a policy with CPH is tailored specifically to meet your liability needs. Policyholders are encouraged to take advantage of their Attorney Avoiding Liability Helpline, providing two free hours of attorney consultation per year for situations with a client that could result in a claim or lawsuit. With their online application and renewal process, real-time online policy change capabilities, and knowledgeable customer service, they continue to keep their customers' needs a priority. Get a quote and apply online to receive proof of coverage within minutes at cphins.com. Thank you for listening to the Modern Therapist Survival Guide. Learn more about who we are and what we do at mtsgpodcast.com. You can also join us on Facebook and Twitter. And please don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any of our episodes. 